In this module, we'll begin our exploration of the scale groups, from mealybugs through the miscellaneous minor families of scales. Because there are a few mealybugs that can live in true temperate climates, I'll have to cover some of the species that are regular greenhouse pests and some that are normally found in landscape plants in the southern states. The minor scale families have some interesting species with life cycles that still follow the general scale life cycle template. While some may question why mealybugs are in the scale group, they have the general scale life cycle strategy. Most species lay eggs in a mass of long waxy threads that is called an ovisac. These cotton ball like structures are often the things first noticed by a plant's owner. However, there are several species of mealybugs that are ovoviviparous or lay eggs that immediately hatch. Both nymphal instars and adult females of mealybugs are mobile but they usually only move if their feeding site has become a poor source of food or the place is getting too crowded. Like regular scales, those mealybugs that have males produce the males by having the nymph go through a non-feeding pupil stage. The two winged males are quite small and usually missed. The female mealybugs retain their nymphal form but are able to walk about if needed. The two most common mealybugs encountered in the greenhouse are the citrus and long-tailed mealybugs. Both can be found on a wide range of plants, but the long-tailed mealybug is most commonly found on ferns and woody herbaceous plants. The citrus mealybug is oval in outline in all stages and is generally covered with fine waxy powder. Along the lateral margins, short spikes of wax are evenly spaced. The long-tailed mealybug has slightly longer lateral waxy spikes, but the long tail-like waxy threads are diagnostic. Citrus mealybugs can reproduce parthenogenically, but males occasionally occur. Females produce large conspicuous ovisacs in which 300 to 600 eggs are deposited. The eggs take about 10 days to hatch and the nymphal development takes 50 to 60 days. Long-tailed mealybugs have males and mating is obligatory. However, the females don't produce an ovisac as they appear to be ovoviviparous. Actually, the females produce individual eggs that immediately hatch. Each female can produce about 200 offspring which take two to three months to mature. The citrus mealybug generally produces more honeydew than the long-tailed mealybug and both can occur outside in tropical and semi-tropical zones. There is a Mexican mealybug that is another common species found in greenhouses and interior scapes, but it rarely causes much damage to its host plants. In the early 2000s, another mealybug that looked exactly like the Mexican mealybug began to infest greenhouse mums, but this one breeds very fast and can quickly kill the plants. It was eventually found to be another species, the Madeira mealybug. It has short waxy filaments around the rim of the body and when crushed it has a greenish blood compared to the citrus and Mexican mealybugs that have clear blood. This species produces elongated ovisacs and males are common and apparently necessary. It is a copious honeydew producer. The striped mealybug is easily identified because it has two distinctive dark stripes, one on each side of the dorsum. This species also tends to produce long glass-like threads of wax that accumulate over and around the mealybug where it is feeding. It is apparently a native of the American tropics, but it is now found around the world. This is a sexual species that has darkly colored males. The females deposit their eggs in small masses onto shallow pads of wax. It has a fairly regular life cycle with females undergoing three instars and the males undergoing the extra pupil instar. Besides a wide range of greenhouse plants, this mealybug will also infest hibiscus, croton, and sea grape as well as garden plants like tomato, eggplant, and peppers in southern landscapes. It can't withstand freezing temperatures, but it commonly is found on houseplants. 
A common mealybug found on palms, palmettos, and bird of paradise plants is the coconut mealybug. This species is another tropical species that can thrive in semi-tropical zones where it doesn't regularly freeze. It is more domed in shape and has thick waxy pads over its dorsum and along the lateral fringe. No ovisacs are produced and the eggs seem to hatch quickly after being laid by the females. The male pupae are formed inside a silken sheath that can be mistaken for ovisacs. Depending on the temperature, the life cycle can be completed in four to eight weeks. Fire ants and other ants often protect this mealybug by constructing soil and plant debris coverings over the developing mealybugs. The ants harvest the honeydew within these shelters. In North America, we have two cold-hardy species of mealybugs, the grape and taxus mealybugs. Both are quite similar in form, though the grape mealybug is about half the size of the taxus mealybug. While these are most commonly encountered on yew or taxus plants, they are regularly found on rhododendron, dogwood, maple, and lindens. On taxus, they are often detected when ants or wasps are visiting the plants to pick up the honeydew that is being produced. The mealybugs are usually located at the bases of the current year's shoots. Taxus mealybug females are ovoviviparous, while grape mealybug females lay eggs in ovosacs. Both species have males. Taxus mealybugs overwinters as nymphs that complete their development the following summer with one generation per year. Grape mealybugs overwinter as eggs and they can undergo two generations each summer. For the rest of this module, I want to cover some of the smaller scale families that are regularly encountered in our landscapes. The traditional family, Marigoldidae, has recently been divided into several families that include the ground pearls that often attack southern grasses and the giant coccids, which includes the cottony cushion scale, which is a common pest in southern states. We also have two common felt scale pests the azalea scale and the European elm scale, as well as the recently introduced crepe myrtle scale. The beet scale is our most common bark crevice scale. Kermes, or gall scales, are common on our oaks and occasionally can reach pest status. The golden oak scale is another major pit scale pest, and the lobate lac scale is a recent introduction from Florida. Lac scales in India to Cambodia are where the wood finish, shellac, comes from. And we have one false pit scale that is regularly found. We'll spend the next entire module discussing the soft scales, and then another module will cover the armored scales. The cottony cushion scale is North America's most common giant coxid scale. These used to be in the Marigoldidae, but are now in their own family, the monophlebidae. It does best in semi-tropical zones but can occur in moderate temperate climates. The crawlers have conspicuously long legs and antennae which makes them look a little like flat aphids. Each instar produces considerable amounts of waxy filaments which they leave behind when they molt. While males are known, the females are not obligated to mate before they produce eggs in their fluted, elongated ovisacs. This species produces abundant honeydew, and they are often discolored with sooty molds. In most areas, this species undergoes two to three generations per year, which overlap considerably. The felt scales appear to be an assemblage of species that are not directly related to each other. However, they have one feature in common with each other. They form a tight sac in which the female remains and lays her eggs. There is a small opening at the end of this sac where the crawlers emerge. These sacs are usually covered with felt-like wax, which is where their common name comes from. The European elm scale is becoming an important nuisance pest in the new hybrid elms that are resistant to Dutch elm disease. The crepe myrtle bark scale is the most recent introduction into North America where it was discovered in Texas in 2004, but it has spread to Oklahoma and east to Mississippi. 
The azalea bark scale is a relatively common felt scale found on azaleas and rhododendrons in eastern North America. The nymphs are rarely seen, but the females cover their bodies with distinctive felt coverings that eventually make up the ovisacs. These are formed in the crotches of small branches or in bark crevices of larger stems. As the red female produces her pink eggs, she shrivels into a small husk. The eggs hatch in late April into early May, and the crawlers settle to feed on the new bark. New adult males and females mature by early August when the females make a new felt sack. Eggs hatch again in September, and the nymphs overwinter to finish development in the next early spring. This pest is common on elms, especially American elm and related cultivars, and occasionally it is found on Zalkova. It overwinters as mature female second instar nymphs tucked into crevices at the bases of branches. While most populations are parthenogenic, males are known, and these overwinter in their cocoons located in bark crevices. When elm seeds begin to form, the successfully overwintered female nymphs move to main branches and molt, insert their mouth parts, feed, produce honeydew, and form their felt sacs by late May. Each female can lay up to 400 eggs over an extended period. In June to July, the crawlers move to leaves where they feed along the major leaf veins. These can continue to produce honeydew until August through September when the nymphs move back to the bark for overwintering. The bark crevice scales are small species. One occurs on beech and the other attacks sugar maple. The beech scale adults are only 1 16th inch long. This species is entirely parthenogenic and it overwinters as mature crawlers located under a felt covering. In early spring, these molt and undergo the second instar rapidly. Adults are present from May to November, during which time only four to eight yellow eggs are laid. These take about 20 days to hatch, and the crawlers immediately settle in bark crevices and insert their mouth parts. This species can slowly build up huge numbers that can completely cover the bark of susceptible beech trees. Their feeding apparently provides entry points for the fungal beech nectria disease that eventually will kill the tree. There are over 30 species of Kermi scales described from North America and about five of them are common pests of urban landscape oaks. Most don't have official common names but two are generally recognized. The northern red oak Kermes and the pin oak Kermes. Other species are very common on live oaks and some of the western oaks. These are called gall-like scales because the adult females often look like ornamented bullet galls that are common on oak trees. Kermes scales can be copious honeydew producers and the pin oak Kermes has been associated with a bacterium that causes what is commonly called drippy blight disease. Kermes adult females are conspicuous and often are between a quarter inch and three eighths of an inch across. They are roughly spherical and each species often has regular markings across the upper dorsum. When the scales are developing, they generally look like a rough back soft scale of some sort. When the females are producing eggs, they swell up and their outline becomes smooth. These scales are often attended by ants that collect their honeydew. A recent publication documented the annual life cycle of the pin oak Kermes scale. That study found that the winter is spent as first instar nymphs primarily located on the bark of the trunk and branches. In the spring, when new shoots are elongating, these nymphs move to the new growth where they insert their mouth parts to continue feeding. After a few weeks, the first instars molt into two dimorphic forms. One will become males and one will become females. The males tend to settle on older parts of the tree, while females usually settle on the new shoots, generally at their bases. 
After another few weeks, the female nymphs molted into the immature females that take another few weeks to a month to swell up and begin producing eggs under their bodies. Males emerge during the time that the females first molted. The golden oak scale is often called the oak pit scale because the scales often cause swellings of the bark tissues in which the scales reside. This species is entirely parthenogenic. It apparently came from Europe, and in North America it is most common in northeastern North America on white oak species. Adult females overwinter in their pits and produce eggs over an extended period from late May into July. Crawlers settle only on new to one-year-old growth. Upon inserting their mouth parts, the cambium tissues often react and cause callus tissues to form under the bark. This forms the pit in which the scale finishes its development. New females begin to be present by August. Recently transplanted white oaks can be overwhelmed by this scale, which causes considerable branch dieback. Speaking of heavy infestations, here is a picture of a white oak branch that was completely encrusted by the golden oak scales. This resulted in the death of a 2 inch diameter top of the white oak. North America has very few native lac scales which are located primarily in Mexico and southwestern United States. The lobate wax scale was detected in South Florida in 1999 on a hibiscus plant. Since that time, it has rapidly spread across southern Florida where it can kill back many of the commonly used landscape shrubs, especially wax myrtle. It is now recorded as being able to infest over 300 species of plants. It is a copious honeydew producer which often coats the X-shaped covering of the scales and turns them a blackish brown color. Without the coating, the scales are a red brown color. The crawlers are deep red and these can be blown to nearby plants or carried by birds or animals as incidental hitchhikers. Reproduction is continual and two months are generally needed to go from crawlers to reproductive females. Males are not known. The common false pit scale is found across North America where it can attack over 60 species of trees and shrubs. It can occasionally cause problems in landscape trees, but usually when these are under stress, especially after transplanting. The scales overwinter as eggs deposited into waxy husk made by the females. Each female will produce 80 to 140 eggs. These eggs hatch in mid-May and the crawlers tend to settle on thin bark branches or in crevices of the bark of larger trees. The second instar is reached by July and male pupae have been observed by the end of July. Mating occurs in the last week of July and first week of August. After that time, the females begin to swell and egg laying is finished by mid-September. This pest gets its name because some trees react to the females by forming a shallow pit around their bodies.